in India, they believe that leprosy is a curse from God. If you are born with leprosy, that means that you're, because of karma, somehow paying for a sin that you committed in a previous life. And unfortunately, even if your children don't have leprosy, they're still affected by the same social stigma that leprosy patients um, bear in India. So as a result, you have an entire generation of children who wind up as beggars on the streets because their parents have no other option for supporting them. And those are the children that we take into the home at Rising Star Outreach. They're covered with lice and scabies and just kind of just these pathetic little kids that you just think, oh. <laughs> but their eyes are just bright. I mean, they're children. Children are children no matter where you go in the world, and they are full of light. And so we take these kids and we we literally, we, we change their stars. <laughs> these kids who are destined to be the next generation of leprosy beggars are suddenly gonna be some of the leaders in India because they're gonna get the best education that is offered. It just puts me in awe of the plan that God has for you and for what your life can be. I mean, I never expected to be in India. I, that day that I first walked into Ricks College as a 17-year-old undergrad, I had absolutely no idea what my life was gonna hold. But I believe that when I started listening to the principles that I was being taught that first day about prayer and about individual worth and about becoming who you potentially can be, I think that that put me on a path to follow those principles the rest of my life and to choose things that I never would have chosen otherwise had I not been taught that I had potential to do things I didn't know I could do. I'm Amy Antonelli, and I graduated from Ricks College in 1994 as a history major. I'm currently pursuing a master's in public administration with an emphasis on nonprofit management. Part of the really deep rewards of our work was seeing that abject poverty change and seeing the people become self-sufficient and, and start to feel dignity for the first time in years. Watching that made me feel like I wanted to be able to do that for more people, but I wasn't sure how to do that. And so I started to think about ways to learn and how I could gain those skills to be able to scale what we'd done in India to make it accessible to people all over the world. Somebody suggested that I look at the Harvard Kennedy School program and so I did, and it was a perfect fit for what I was looking for in terms of being able to teach me those skills in the middle of my career that will help me to continue to be successful throughout my long-term goals. The act of stopping on a backpack every morning and going to school and, and feeling that sense of excitement around academics and learning again is so much fun. I mean, it reminds me of life back in Rexburg, frankly, <laughs> when people were going to school and were talking all the time about new concepts and new ideas and discussing these things that were going to affect the way that they lived their lives from then on. Um, and that's what we're doing here at Harvard every day. I'm surrounded by people who are making unbelievable differences in the world. My program is filled with people who are just unbelievable. And they inspire and motivate me every day to be a better person. I think that what BYU-Idaho is doing right now is amazing. I think that people are slowly starting to hear about it. And as they do, they're more and more impressed. What they're doing with the learning model right now is straight out of what we're doing here at Harvard. It's unbelievable that they're taking kids that are 17, 18, 19 years old, and they're asking them to stand up to the same level of intelligence as some of the graduate students here at the best school in the country. I think that in 10 years, we're gonna see a totally different kind of school because of what you're building now. And I think that there's a level of excitement around that, a level of enthusiasm. Everybody is looking at Idaho right now and watching what's happening. And I think that going to school, for a lot of kids right now, going to that school would be something that set the course of the rest of their lives because they would feel that enthusiasm and they would be inspired by it. I remember being in several classes where I was shocked at the you know, inspiration that I suddenly felt. And in particular, one of those classes was Professor Marshall. 
who taught us about the American experience and how democracy, you know, the democratic experiment happened at the beginnings of this country. And it made me feel like there was something that I could do that was great as a result of what those people had done. Brother Marshall was so good at helping us to realize that this wasn't just history, that this was about us today. And I've always carried that lesson with me. I've always felt a sense of responsibility because he taught us that we were expected to use this country that we'd been given and use this freedom that we'd been offered and, and to make something out of it. And I, I'm not sure that I've done that yet, actually, but I, I feel like the rest of my life I will continue to try. People are often surprised at the things that they turn out to be interested in. And life has a way of throwing things at you that you never would have expected. I mean, if somebody would have told me 10 years ago that I would spend the next seven years working in leprosy colonies in India, I would have told them they were nuts. But I think that God has a way of preparing you for what He has in store for your life. And you need to be open to hearing that. Mm -hmm.